Well, I'm joined now by Martin Sadler, who's the editor of the Rugby League Express. First of all, Martin, I just want to ask you, tell us what this uh, award is all about and, you know, a day like this, uh, why you've arranged it and how long it's been going for. Well, it's been going since 2008 and the Albert Goldthorpe Medal is intended to be given to the player who's the best and fairest throughout the season. And uh, as you may know, we, we give points for every Super League match from round one to round 27. Uh, it's a 3 to one format so that the uh, best player gets three points and so on. Um, so we, um, we, we obviously then publicise the Albert Goldthorpe table in League Express uh, every week and uh, uh, some great players have won it. Actually Danny Bruff won the inaugural uh, Albert Goldthorpe medal in 2008. That was followed by Michael Dobson of Hulkingston Rovers in 2009. And last year we had joint winners um, who were Sam Tompkins and Pat Richards of Wigan. Uh, cost us a fortune, incidentally, because we had to have two gold medals uh, prepared. <laughs> I'm still recovering from that. <laughs> but, um, and this year it's Rangi Chase, who's j actually, it's been a fantastic uh, battle for the Albert Goldthorpe medal this year. Um, there have been you know, several players who were contenders, but in the end, Rangi Chase and Sam Tompkins just ran away from the field a little, and it went down to the very last week. Um, uh, Rangi was one point ahead of Sam as we went into the final fixtures. Sam scored one point for Wigan against the Crusaders on Friday night, but fortunately for Rangi, he scored a point for his uh, outstanding performance against um, Hulkingston Rovers on Saturday, where, if you recall, he, he made two tries with absolutely brilliant passes, and that was enough to get him the one point that he needed. So uh, he just got past the finishing post, but we're delighted. Delighted for him, actually, and delighted for um, the Castleford Club, you know, because the, 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 the Castleford Tigers have just missed out on the top eight this year. Uh, so, you know, in one sense, this perhaps might be seen as a, you know, a, a good consolation prize for them and a great thing for Rangi in his own right. So, so we're very proud of this award and, uh, you know, it, it, this, this event is growing. It's becoming, I think, more prestigious. I certainly think the players... Uh, value the Albert Goldthorpe medal very highly, you know, because, uh, you know, they, the, the, the players, certainly in my experience, know all about the award and know what it takes to win it. And, and the important thing is it's, it's an award that's won over the entire length of the regular season. You know, it's not just, um, you know, we're not voting on it right at the end of the season when, when we can only perhaps remember the last two weeks. Um, it, it goes on throughout the season. So I think it's got a great validity. Uh, it's based broadly on the Dally M medal in Australia, and you know, for us so far, it's been a tremendous, uh, a tremendous innovation. And listening to what Rangi was saying, just speaking to him a, a moment ago, he was sort of saying that he's been following, you know, kind of the way things are going, how tight the battle was becoming between him and yes. Sam. So, so there's interest amongst the players in who's going to win it. Well, there is, you know, and uh, as I say, Sam Tompkins was an interesting one actually, you know, because Sam, two years ago, uh, Sam won our Albert Goldthorpe Rookie of the Year. Um, medal, which we might like to talk about actually uh, as well. And last year he was the joint winner of the, of the Albert Goldthorpe medal itself. Um, and, uh, you know, as I say, I think all the players that, that, that I speak to um, are, are really very keen on, uh, on, on this and, you know, understand it. We, we do try, by the way, to ensure that we don't tread on the toes of the Man of Steel ceremony. Uh, the Man of Steel ceremony is, is held in the week leading up to the grand final, of course, as you probably know. Um, and we try and hold this ceremony, uh, it's a very different sort of ceremony in fact, but, but we try and hold this in the week immediately after the regular season ends, uh, you know, to give plenty of time for the, um, you know, momentum to build up to the Man of Steel award as well. So, yeah, we, you know, we're very proud of what we've done, uh, I'm glad to say. And it's great for the players, though, to be recognised in different ways, really. I suppose there are, you know, maybe as you say, the Man of Steel awards is the dream team, but it's always nice, isn't it, if you can get recognition, and particularly, you know, for someone like Rangi Chase, who's playing for Cass, as you say, maybe a little less uh, fancied team, they're not in the limelight as much as Wigan and Sam Tompkins. Everyone knows how well he's playing, but, you know, for him to be recognised, as I say, it's, it's the icing on the cake for his, his efforts for his team this season. Oh, it's a massive thing, yeah, and a lot of people say, you know, that the Albert Goldthorpe medal, uh, because we, we do it week by week and uh, in, 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 in the, the way that we allocate points, that um, it does tend to favour a very good player uh, in a team where perhaps he isn't surrounded by a, a great number of other star players, and certainly Rangi. Uh, I mean, virtually any game this year, Rangi has done something absolutely outstanding. I don't think he's had any bad games really 
Um, and maybe it is a bit easier in, in a way for a player like him to rack up the points in our in our medal table than perhaps somebody like Sam, who of course is playing in a team of superstars by and large at, uh, at Wigan. Um, and, uh, but I think, you know, anybody, w w what's really interesting for me now is to see whether Rangi can now kick on from winning this medal and also win the Man of Steel medal because he's a, a leading contender. Of course, the uh, Man of Steel these days is awarded by player votes and it's going to be really interesting to see whether, you know, the players vote for him or vote for Sam or, or vote for anybody else, really. So, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's great, you know, that we're in the season of individual awards. Of course, players have their own uh, awards at their clubs and, of course, this award and, and then the Man of Steel evening. And, and of course, there's the Dream Team, as you say, which uh, Rangi uh, was, was included in yesterday. So, it's, you know, it's a great, you know, it, it may not have won a... Uh, a trophy this year, as, you know, collectively as a team, but uh, is obviously picking up a lot of accolades as, as the season's ended. It's called the Albert Goldthorpe Award. Tell us again the reason why you've named it after him. Well, Albert Goldthorpe was the first superstar of rugby league, I would say. Um, he was uh, there right at the start in 1895 when rugby league was created, you know, uh, after that meeting at the George Hotel in Huddersfield. And... Um, his career therefore crossed over, you know, the old rugby union days, the, the, the new rugby league days. But he was um, an absolutely great... It's difficult now, looking back, to, to imagine how big an impact Albert Goldthorpe had. It's true to say that in the Leeds area, uh, and in the north of England generally, he was the David Beckham of his day. In those days, rugby league was probably the, you know, the big game throughout most of the north of England. And uh, Albert captained uh, Great Britain in the very first, or England as it was, in the very first test series against the touring New Zealanders in 1907. And, you know, he had a, an absolutely massive impact. He played for Hunslet, uh, and in those days, again, it's hard now to realise this, but Hunslet was, you know, the biggest club in the game in those days, a much bigger club than, than Leeds, incidentally. And in, in the 1907-1908 season, Albert Goldthorpe captained um, Hunslet to win all four cups. In those days, you know, they were the first team to do it. The, the four cups were the Challenge Cup, the Championship, the Yorkshire Cup and the Yorkshire League. And they won everything that they could win in that year. And only two teams, you know, throughout the rest of history ever did that. That was Huddersfield um, in 1914 and Swinton in 1928. So, you know, it, it's a, it, it, was a, it was a massive, massive player. And, and, and we were very conscious that we wanted to um, name this medal. The Australians had the Dally M medal. Well, Dally, Dally Messenger was the Australian equivalent of Albert Goldthorpe back in those days. You know, he, he came on that 1907 tour with the New Zealanders and came back again in, in, in 1908 with the Australians. Um, and we therefore looked for a player who was, you know, a historical figure who was the equivalent of of Dally M and Albert Goldthorpe was, was the person who was, you know, quite an easy pick really for, for this particular medal, to, 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 to name this medal. So, you know, we think it commemorates his name and the, the very first Albert Goldthorpe um, award ceremony in 2008, we actually had uh, Albert Goldthorpe's descendants, you know, two of his relatives um, at, the, uh, at the function. So, you know, that was a, a real great thing to to have and you know I think it helped establish the you know the, the, the prestige of this particular award. And there's obviously a, a number of other awards handed out today as well uh, I've got a whole list of, you yeah. can probably recap it easier than I can but so uh, you're recognizing you know as you say young players as well you mentioned that earlier in the interview. Well the rookie of the year um, is um, Jermaine McGilvery of Huddersfield the winger that was a very difficult that was a very difficult choice we had a panel um, that uh, voted on, on, on rookies and there were some tremendous contenders um, but Jermaine just, just pipped the opposition for, for this one and it's nice actually to, to be at Huddersfield to, to be able to make that award but Jermaine started the season with only five Super League appearances to his credit and um, you know uh, at the start of the season I don't think the people at this club at Huddersfield would have thought that um, that, that, that he would have you know, become a regular. If I'm if I'm honest about it, that certainly that's what they say. They were, at, the, at the start of the season, they were giving um, other clubs in the championship the opportunity to take Jermaine on loan, 
but Jermaine sort of said, no, I'm, I'm going to, you know, get down, get stuck in. Uh, and he's, at, he's actually had a brilliant season this year. He's played in all but one of Huddersfield's games. He's established himself as, uh, you know, the, the first choice pick on the right wing. He's actually made it into the England Knights squad. Um, and I'm fairly sure that he'll be in the England elite squad before too long, such is his form. So, you know, it's great to see, you know, young guys coming into the game like Jermaine and making such a big impact and, and showing, you know, what an, what an abundance of talent there is in, in Super League at the moment. So you don't just recognise the players who are involved in the game now, you also have some uh, awards going to some guys who've uh, done some great things in the past, as well as people on the periphery, you know, the commentators who play a big part in the game. Well, we, we, we do. We've got a, a Lifetime Achievement Award, and that uh, is going to go to Steve-O, Mike Stevenson, the, the Sky commentator, uh, for all the things that Mike's done in the game since, uh, since it was a small boy in, Huddersfield, in, in, in Dewsbury. You know, he's, uh, he was a great player. He was in the World Cup team in 1972. Uh, he went to Australia and made a big impact playing the game over there. But more importantly, he, he's done a tremendous amount for the heritage of the game with opening the Heritage Museum in, uh, in Huddersfield at the George Hotel. And, of course, he's been a Sky commentator now for 20 years. We um, kind of associate him with that role, don't we, we now? Because do, he's so, such a, a main part of Rugby League's coverage. He is. He's, he's absolutely, absolutely that. And, uh, you know, we thought now was the time to, um, you know, recognise everything that Mike has given to the game. Um, you know, he's been an absolute you know, rock for Rugby League really and uh, you know, hopefully he'll continue to be so over many more years. Um, the other, we've, we've, we've also got a, a Player Achievement Award um, which goes to Robbie Paul or Robbie Hunter Paul as he now is. Robbie's career is, or playing career, is coming to an end uh, at the end of this season of course. He's playing for Lee at the moment and uh, I'd be very surprised if Lee didn't get to the Grand Final, the Championship Grand Final and that will almost certainly be Robbie's last game. So we're going to give an award uh, to recognise uh, Robbie. Uh, that's going to be presented, by the way, by Alex Murphy, the great Hall of Fame member. So I think um, I'll very much look forward to, you know, to seeing how, uh, uh, you know, how Alex handles that one. Alex, Alex is a great supporter of uh, the Albert Goldthorpe Lunch. Um, we're also going to give a team award to Warrington. Warrington um, won more points in the Albert Goldthorpe medal table than any other club this year. So I'm, I think Tony Smith is here to, to collect that award, which will be presented by the RFL president, John, John Whaling. And we also have a final award, which is going to Gary Schofield, um, which, which, is, which has a, a story all by itself, actually. Um, it's the Golden Boot uh, Award for 1990. And there's a very interesting story there because uh, in 1990 the Golden Boot was presented by Open Rugby Magazine as it then was um, and in 1990 it should have gone to, to Gary Schofield but apparently the sponsor of the award at that time uh, there was a major row as there often is in Rugby League because the sponsor um, insisted that it should go to an Australian player for their own commercial reasons and um, Harry Edgar I think who was the um, um, owner of Open Rugby at the time refused to do that, but it ended up with the award, with the Golden Boot not being presented. Uh, we were aware of that. We we bought Open Rugby magazine in 1998. We've always been aware of that anomaly, and we decided that um, we ought to do something about it and and present the Golden Boot to to Gary, even though it's 21 years late. Um, and that's what we are doing today. And I think Gary um, is very very grateful for his doing that. And, uh, but it's something that he deserves. He should have got it 21 years ago. Um, you could say better late than never, but it does recognise what an absolutely great Great Britain Test player Gary Schofield was.